Hi guys, in this video we will be setting our home lab server. On our server we will be installing Proxmox and we will create some virtual machines on it. Virtual machines are basically the counterpart of EC2 machines on AWS. So this whole setup costed me around 60,000 rupees. In the end of this video we will see how much would it have been costed me on creating the same amount of resources on AWS as we are creating on our home lab server. So here is our Dell PowerEdge R730. It contains 64 gigs of RAM, 800 gigs of hard drive and 48 cores of CPU. I got it for 60k INR. Basically I got it from one of a refurbished reseller in Delhi. After so much struggle of bringing it to home, unpacking it and all, let's just unpack it. Okay, let's just open it and see what's inside a server. It contains a lot of equipments, very much different from a normal desktop PC. So we will install Proxmox on our server. So for that, we will need a pen drive and a Proxmox ISO image. To download Proxmox ISO, search Proxmox on Google. Click on download Proxmox. Select virtual environment. Click on ISO. So the download will begin. I am just cancelling it out as I already have Proxmox downloaded in my laptop. So now we need to flash the ISO image to our pen drive. So for that you can choose any flashing software. I am using Balina Ether. Now select the downloaded ISO and then the target flash drive. Enter the password if required and wait for the flash to complete. Okay, now our pen drive is ready. Now I will boot the server for the first time. But before we boot, we need to do some arrangement for that. Let's say first we have to plug in the USB to the server. Then we will need a monitor. So I will just set up my monitor. Bear with me. And we also need a keyboard to operate the server. So I will also plug the keyboard to it. Now let's just start. Now we are getting the video output. So first we have to select uh, the boot manager from the menu and we have to select our pen drive as a boot device for the first time. So at the boot time it will ask for your country. You can just select India in here. And then you have to just enter the password for the root user. You can enter a secure password here. Also you need to put the email. You can put your personal email here. So you have to select the ethernet port. You need to select that ethernet port on which you have just connected the LAN cable. Now we just need to wait for the installation to complete. After the installation you will see a black screen like this where you will just flashed out with the IP which is just assigned to your server. The port will be 8006. Now you can log in with the user as root and the password you just entered at the time of installation. You don't need to do much here. Basically you need to just go to your laptop, open the IP and port and let's see what's happening there. Just make sure that you are connected to the same network on which your server is connected. Now you need to log in with the user as root and password you selected at the time of installation. Here we will get a graphical user interface to manage the server. In the left sidebar, make sure you have folder view selected. In the notes section, you will see your server listed. You can click on it to view its summary. Here you can check all your specification, basically how much RAM, how much SSD, how much cores your CPU have. If you compare with AWS, AWS provide EC2 machines. So EC2 machines is nothing but a virtual machine on cloud. Here you can also create a virtual machine. To create that, click on create VM button on the top. 
So in the setup steps, first you have to fill in the VM ID. VM ID is basically numbering the VMs. So basically it start with 100. I'm just leaving it that only. And then you have to put the name. So you can put any name here. I'm just putting it EC2 test. Then you have to click on next. So you'll need an ISO image. So ISO image is basically the software, the operating system that will run on a VM. For that, go to Google, search Ubuntu server download, click on the first link. Here we'll get the link to download the Ubuntu server. Click on the download link. Your download will now get started. I'm canceling it right now because I already downloaded Ubuntu server image on my laptop. Now we'll have to upload the downloaded ISO image to the server. For that, go to the storage section, click on local, click on ISO images tab, click on upload button, select the ISO file you just downloaded and click on upload button. Now our ISO image is uploaded to the server. Now let's create our VM again. Put in the VM ID and a name. Click on next. Now you'll find the image that you just uploaded here in ISO image section. Click next. Now enter the amount of storage that you want to give your VM. Then click next. Here you can select the CPU cores you want to assign your VM. Click on next. Here you will assign the RAM to your VM. Click on next, leave the network section unchanged. Click on next again and here you will get the summary of the VM. You have to just click on finish button to start the creation of VM. In the left side of our menu, you can see the new virtual machine tab just appeared. Here you can find all the VMs that you'll create. Click on the machine. There in the summary tab, you can see the summary of the resources that you allocated to your VM. So basically you can get a gist of what a VM, what is its configuration and how is it performing. Click on console tab to start the VM. Now click on the start now. Now the installation of OS on the VM will start. Now you can follow the on-screen instructions to install the OS on the VM. Just one thing you make sure that you assign a static IP to your machine, not the DHCP one that is by default selected. And also check the install SSH server so that you can SSH into the VM. Now our installation will begin and we'll have to wait for the installation to get completed so that we can use our virtual machine. Now our installation is complete. We need to select the reboot option now. But at the first time of booting, it will show this error that CD-ROM is not found. To solve this, just go to the hardware section, click on CD drive, then click remove and confirm. Going back, you have to just press enter. Now the normal boot process will begin. Now enter the username and the password to log into the VM. And boom, now your VM is ready to be used. It's basically a counterpart of an EC2 machine on the AWS. So yeah, you can use it for any purpose you want. And not just from the Proxmox GUI, you can also SSH into your VM from any SSH clients. So let's just SSH into our VM from the terminal. So open the terminal and you have to just SSH using the username and the IP that you have just assigned to your VM. Enter the password. Now you are into the virtual machine. Now it's all up to you how you want to use this machine.